you know, first of all, I'm always digging and I love one of my favorite reports is that quarterly report from the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency of Derivatives in the FDIC insured banks because presumably Dodd-Frank was supposed to stop that proprietary trading, that risk-taking uh, gambling. But, but since 2008, I mean, the banks and the bank holding companies make more of their income from trading. I think, was it one or two quarters ago, 100% of their income was based on this trading. And when you look at the speculative trading that's happening in the FDIC insured banks versus the end user trading, it's really ridiculous. So what people don't realize is how much leverage is in that system. And what really kind of threw me for a loop was when I looked at, okay, so back in 2013, they created this other accounting formula to compress or make it appear that there were fewer derivatives out there because, hey, derivatives kind of got a bad name when they imploded in 2008. So what they did was they took trades that are similar because they're all unique, right? So not the same trade, but similar trades, and this would offset that. But last year, or last quarter rather, banks, FDIC insured banks, spent $180 trillion to compress to make it appear like there's only $185.9 trillion derivative worth of derivatives out there. Think about, I so, mean. <laughs> Lynette Zhang, chief market analyst for ITM Trading says that 2008 was the point at which the system died and was placed on QE life support until the Fed it could put in place the next system that could replace the existing system. It looks like the banking crisis of 2008 is being repeated. We're back at that point in history where everything shifts. The system is completely depleted at this point. The value of the currencies has officially been exhausted. Public trust is the only thing that matters, she says. There's a lack of trust between central banks. Zhang yells, we need to go into a new system because this system is done. She thinks that deflation and inflation are really two sides of the same coin. CBDCs are proposed as a solution to inflation by the Federal Reserve but they also pose the risk of deflation and limit the Fed's ability to lower interest rates. In today's video, Richard Hart, who is a crypto and macro specialist, is going to provide his insights regarding the actions that the Fed is taking and what is occurring in other cryptocurrency. By the way, if you're interested in learning about DeFi and discovering innovative projects, you may want to check out our Master in DeFi course. It's designed to help you understand DeFi in a fun and easy way with lessons that you can access immediately. Right now, we're offering a special launch discount of 90% off. This course will also give you the skills you need to make the most of Pulse Chain when it's released. If you'd like to learn more, just click on the link in the description and become a true cryptopreneur. Now, without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. Lynette Zhang thoughts regarding banking crisis. Or, or what? Well, it is stating the obvious, and I also think that it's kind of interesting that we seem to be paralleling what happened in 2008. And, and I, so I think Jamie was like right on top of that, because almost to the day, that was when, when J.P. Morgan took over Bear Stearns. And that was supposed to keep everything contained and calm everybody down. But then, and the public didn't notice anything. But then in September, well, 2008, then the public became aware when Lehman went down. So I think that he probably sees some parallels. But 2008 is when the system actually died and was put on QE life support till they could get into place the next system that will take the current system's place. And, and 
you know, what, I, what I'm talking about is like back in 71, we went from a quasi gold standard in mm-hmm. August and the beginning of August of 1971 to a pure debt based standard in by the end of August and going into September. People didn't realize that anything had changed when in reality, everything had changed. And we're at that same juncture right now where everything has changed. It's true, but it goes back even further than that. It goes back to when Clinton eliminated the Glass-Steagall Act. And the Glass-Steagall Act was put in place in 1933 to separate risk-taking Wall Street banks from deposit-taking mom-and-pop banks. And so I think it was 96 when that was eliminated and allowed those two banking entities to merge. And I haven't heard one person not in the Senate committees or, or in any of the government committees or central banks talk about separating those two entities. So they don't want to because this is about the banks and the and the financial system, but also... You know, yeah, it, but in what, what Trump did was he took away oversight essentially from those mid sized banks. So there are a lot of check boxes that they just did no longer need to check. But even when they put Dodd Frank in place in 2010, that was supposed to eliminate that proprietary trading, and it didn't, the Volcker rule. They, they dismantled the Volcker rule. So they took away oversight and they dismantled dismantled rules because as they said, well, wow, we've had six years of experience and nothing has happened. So this is a good thing to do. But they never talk about the real issue, which is risk-taking banks using depositor monies to take those risks. Lynette Zhang views on de-dollarization where dollar is headed. Also, what are her thoughts regarding gold? I mean, that 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 is the goal. And keep in mind that the system to replace the dollar on a global scale has already been not just put in place over at the IMF, it's called the substitution fund, but it, it, it is a way that if you are a country or a corporation outside of the U.S. and you're holding U.S. dollar denominated assets or instruments, you can deposit it into that substitution mm-hmm. fund and then they can convert that those assets into SDR denominated assets and in theory control the speed at which those dollars go back to the US so again a a controlled demolition but can they really do exactly. it exactly that that's the question Well, I think more and more people are getting more and more nervous as they're watching what's happening. Um, What I'm kind of looking for, so I'd say yes, mainstream, we should, because we vote with our wallets, we vote with our purses. So if you buy stocks, that's your vote. If you stay in dollars, that's your vote. If you buy cryptocurrencies, that's your vote. And if you buy gold and you buy silver, that's your vote. If more and more people vote for this and they now have real money that's outside of the system that's global, no matter where you are, and, and regardless of the form, gold and silver are monetary at its base, that's your vote. And then they can't pull it off if enough of them. Lynette Zhang thoughts regarding Bitcoin performance. I, I'm, you know, my mind is, is open. The challenge that I have with Bitcoin is simply that I only see its functionality in one place and nobody has been able to expand that. So in other words, what what I think is really good about Bitcoin is you can hold a lot of them on a little thumb drive and stick it in your pocket and go anywhere in the world. I think that is a great advantage but I don't see any other functionality for Bitcoin. Whereas with gold and silver as well, physical, not digital, physical, it's used in every single sector of the global economy. So therefore it has this 
broad base of functionality. I mean, it's used in it's used in the financial system, but it's also used in medicine and electronics and space travel and art and food, you know, et cetera, and more. Um, so when I'm going into a fight, I want something that has the most function. I don't want to go in with a teeny weeny little Swiss army knife. I want to go in with a bazooka and a cannon and, and a tank. And, and so for me, that's the difference between the two. But if anybody yeah. can show me other functions, because I can buy that $8 million coin and take it anywhere in the world too. So I can move a lot of wealth in a small package. Maybe not as much mm -hmm. as Bitcoin. I mean, it kind of depends. But um, I just, you know, please, if I saw it as a tool of barter, if I saw it in different functions, then I would feel better about it because I do think some are going to survive. And, and Wall Street yeah. has really adopted Bitcoin. So that could very well be the one that survives. But I don't think it takes you out of, outside of the system, not with the adoption of it in Wall Street. According to Richard Hart, if cryptocurrencies did not exist, startups would be my best alternative investment. Gold. Startups. Oh, it's the second okay. best performing asset class, and I've been doing them my whole life. Yeah. So I would just keep making businesses. And with the proceeds from those businesses, what do you think you would have done? Make more businesses. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's, you, can't, you can't beat it. I mean, look what Peter Thiel did, right? Peter Thiel made a business, x.com, which merged with PayPal. And then he uh, invested in Facebook. And then he invested in a startup uh, that basically like was EOS. Yeah. And then, of course, EOS dumped on everyone's head about Bitcoin. Lol, their foundation. But he, he made a killing there. And then he started Palantir. And then he started... <laughs> like a longevity VC and he yeah. had like just keeps starting things. So seems fine. Bill Gates keeps starting things. Uh, Jeff Bezos keeps starting things. Elon Musk keeps starting things. Richard Hart keeps starting things. It's, we see ways to make the world better. We do it. So I would do, yeah, the, same, very cool. I would do the same thing whether crypto existed or not there's there's a million things wrong with the world you can fix and people will happily pay you nope the the tail can't wag the dog crypto is too small to move gold period if every <laughs> single crypto holder dumped their entire load into gold it wouldn't move it which is why it's gain suck because there's not enough money in the world to buy its stupid price up because it's too heavy its market cap is too big to go up. So oh, I kind of see what you mean. So, so even if we did all pile in, it wouldn't have, wouldn't, wouldn't have moved the price because of the, yep. the size of the market. All right, yep. good answer. And, and by the way, they're mining that stuff all the time. And the more the price goes up, the more they mine. So, you know, when Bitcoin price goes up, they don't mine any extra. They, they, they mine very smallly extra because they overrun the retargeting algorithm by like a little tiny bit, but you're still in the single digit inflation, right? You're going to go from like 1.7 to like 1.8% inflation. Um, but with gold, they really do mine more. At some point they could just grab an asteroid and have it land here. And then you're like, Oh, we just hundred X the gold supply. So like if gold was going to be good, it'd be good. It's not good limp in uh, some countries cool. not only is it limp it's actually tax disadvantaged as well There's a lot of countries where they restrict what kinds of gold you can buy and not pay that and having to pay like 20 percent extra on your uh your investment up front sucks badly and then you've got constant overhead costs of storing it and then you've got constant someone has to test that it's real instead of gold plated tungsten, which is nearly identical. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, one ounce bars and, and thicker bars out there that are just gold plated tungsten. So like it's it's just not good, man.
Yeah, think, yeah. think about it this way. I'm, Warren Buffett has a good take on this. He has a lot of good takes on a lot of stuff. He doesn't have a good take in crypto, but he's got a good take in gold. You dig it out of the ground to bury it back in the ground in a bank vault. Yeah. <laughs> and it produces exactly what? You moved its location in the ground. Congrats. So, you know, it, farmland is more productive. Businesses are more productive. Uh, yeah. These are the most current ideas that Richard Hart has had towards the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve has two mandates. It's called dual mandate. One is to keep inflation at 2%. The other is to make sure everyone has jobs. Now, making sure everyone has jobs is a pretty hard one to do because printing or not printing money doesn't actually hire anyone. So that's a weird one. And so right now, they know that the inflation is too high. A couple of days ago, they did a survey of all the people that are on the board of deciding whether interest rates are going to go up or not. And they all said, yeah, we're not going to lower rates in 2023. We, we see no, we don't, the language was along the lines of, we don't see any way that they're going to be lowering rates in 2023. And so as they raise rates, it makes money more expensive, literally. So people with mortgages that have adjustable rates have now two or three X their monthly cost of paying the mortgage, which for you people aren't in America, mortgage means home loan. Uh, people are living day to day. They don't have in their budget or their earning potential an extra two or three X on the largest expense they have, which is their housing. It's basically going to cause a lot of people to get foreclosed on. We also see the steepest decline in home sales, I think in history in the United States. Home sales are down like on average 40%, I believe. Now that's not dollar figure because the dollars are inflated, that's the number of sales. So the number of sales has fallen 40% this year compared to last year. That's a big fall. So the Fed, in order to fulfill its dual mandate, and get inflation down to 2% is going to have to keep raising rates. And in the 70s, they raised rates to, I believe, 19%. What are your thoughts on these experts' valuable advice? Tell us in the comments. We hope we were able to provide some value and helped you to move a step ahead in your crypto journey. Be sure to check out our crypto brand called Cryptopreneur and get yourself the highest quality crypto merch available right now on the market and make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our content. Till next time, goodbye.